from the president's point of view, he said this is a great deal for Canada, for the United States, and for Mexico. Give us a sense of how great a deal is it for the United States. How do you quantify it? Well, it's going to be tens and tens of billions of dollars of more manufacturing and farm sales for United States companies. The reason that it's going to work and the reason it works for all three is we're not compromising Canada and Mexico. We're, we're dealing with our imperfections in NAFTA that let a lot of material come in from outside. That door is now being closed. That's because of the 75 percent domestic a requirement within the new U.S. MCA. Further, there's a subset of 40 to 45 percent that has to be made at wages more than $16 an hour. That's put in there <clears throat> to assure that there'll be a fair distribution of the business we bring back from Asia and from Europe. As to the agriculture, there been huge improvements made in that. In the case of Mexico, it isn't even just milk and dairy. We did get rid of those horrible, infamous chapters 6 and 7, but it's also opened up poultry, eggs, cheeses, milk, all kinds of products. And elsewhere in agriculture, got rid of a very unfair classification system that put our wheat into an inferior category as it was entering Canada. Those are all gone. Plus, there's now tremendous protection for biologics. That's a very, very important thing, and it will address the costs of doing business. These are very, very huge features. Another set of features that will be very, very good right. is both Canada and Mexico had very low so-called de minimis rules, right. namely how much material you could bring in without tariff. Those are now much higher, and that's going to be very good for our e-commerce companies, and it will be very good for retailers in American communities along the respective borders of Canada and Mexico. Right. So I know, Mr. Secretary, that uh, there's a large team of people who have been working really, really hard, the staff, to really support the negotiation from Mr. Lighthizer and others. Give us a sense, round numbers, general, how many jobs, auto jobs, will be added because of this? The President said there's going to be a lot more jobs for auto workers. How many? Well, we've lost a couple of a quarter of a million jobs or more in the auto parts sector, you're going to see vast majority of those coming back. So the, the vast majority of 250,000, similarly with respect to agriculture, farmers, uh, what sorts of numbers are we talking about for farming here in the United States in terms of jobs? Well, the, the rules there are so recent and so complicated, we frankly haven't had a chance to quantify them. But directionally, dairy, uh, both the, the powdered milk and regular milk, poultry, eggs, cheese, and wheat are all very important items with Canada because they had been very bad on them. Mexico, no tariffs whatsoever on our agricultural products, and they are revising more favorably to us their so-called sanitary and phytosanitary rules, which had no scientific basis, but were really just protectionism. So in both borders, it's very good, both for automobiles and for farmers. For, for Bloomberg Television and Radio, we're speaking with U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. So, so Secretary Ross, uh, the president spoke repeatedly in his remarks about the problem with uh, the uh, balance of trade deficit. Uh, what will be the net effect on the trade deficit for the United States with Mexico and with Canada because of this new agreement? Oh, in my estimation, it will be number of tens of billions of dollars. But no, no more precise estimate than that, just tens of billions? Look, this deal was made at midnight last night. You can't really expect us 12 hours later to have everything quantified. We will be quantifying and we will release the numbers and you'll be astonished at how big they are.
Terrific. We'll look forward to that. Thank you, sir. So how critical is the deadline of November 30? I know that we're going to have a change in administration down in Mexico. Do we need to get this thing done before that change? Well, that's the general understanding that we've had with the incoming president, Labrador, in Mexico. He wants it to be through the Mexican Congress before his inauguration on December 1st. And that's important to him for lots and lots of reasons. He's been very cooperative and very constructive in the negotiations because he knows it's good for the Mexicans. There's been almost no capital expenditure, especially foreign direct investment, in Mexico while this has been pending. This will now clear the air. And in addition, they've been in great uncertainty as to what will be the rules of trade going forward. Businesses can live with good news. Businesses can live with bad news. Very hard for business to deal with uncertainty. Which is what we have right now with respect to China. Final question, really. What effect, if any, does this have on the Chinese negotiations or the lack of negotiations? President Trump referred to that and seemed to suggest what you've suggested to us before, which is it's too soon to really deal with China. Is that right? And when will the time be right? Well, I think it is too soon. It only makes sense to clean up your own neighborhood first. We're now doing that with the deal with Canada and Mexico. So that solidifies our North American base. There also is some negative implication for China in the new rules of origin, because they have been shipping a lot of parts in through the NAFTA regime. Because NAFTA, while it nominally required 62.5 percent of parts to be made within NAFTA, it did so on very precisely specified parts about half of which are not even used in cars anymore. And those that have been replaced by new electronics or other technological improvements have been deemed to be of NAFTA origin, even though it's perfectly obvious they weren't. So these gains are coming at the expense of non-NAFTA areas, most notably Asia and Europe.